Welcome back. So we've passed tech inspection, we got in a race, and now um, having flown this frame for a few months and gotten a flight in a few different conditions, I wanted to do a follow-up video and cover the exact gear that I used, the wiring, some of the sparring locations, um, the glues and adhesives that I used in my build, the uh, make sure you get a detailed look at the top and bottom layout, um, I want to talk about some of the weak spots, uh, and I wanted to also show a wiring diagram, cover the final dry weight, and any possible changes or future improvements. So with that, let's jump in. So the gear I used in my spec wing is a pretty standard gear here. We've got a FreeSky X4R receiver, powered by here, this is a 3 amp uh, output with adjustable voltage, um, a D-Sun voltage regulator. This thing is only a couple of dollars on eBay and Amazon. This is a BL Heli 32 ESC. We've got a TBS Unify HV for the video transmitter. And this is a race model so it only goes up to 200 milliwatts which is better for racing. We've got the standard Cobra spec motor 6x4 E-Prop from APC, and this is a VAS Minion um, with an MMCX connector antenna. For the servo, I went with Emacs Metal Gear Digital Servos. These servos, the Emacs ones, the Metal Gear ones, have been pretty soluble, solid and reliable for me, so I am uh, a big fan of those. For my camera, I just went with a little Runcam Swift Micro. These guys are light and they fit within the foam so they don't have any extra drag on them. That's really the main reason I like them. I know I could probably get a slightly better image if I went to a little bit larger sensor, but um, I would worry more about getting the camera fitting into the foam at that point. The sparring on the spec wing is pretty easy, especially with the V2 kit from VAS. Alex cuts these channels out here in the front. You can see the channel goes all the way to the wing tip but you want to drop it a few inches short. This gives you some flexibility so when you strike a gate or something, you don't tear up the wing. I might go a little bit longer here on the next one, but you definitely want to, you don't want to go all the way to the end. You can't really see my top spar, but there's an I-beam spar that comes across um, right here, and it's embedded way down in this cut. These are some extra spars that I put in here that stop rippage along this line in between the two sides sections of the wing. On the bottom side, I extended those spars all the way up and made an A-frame. That's going to give this uh, frame a lot more rigidity, probably more than it needs, but I was able to do it and keep the weight down. Here you can see the matching bottom side spar of the cross cut. And the point is, is to have these spars matching top and bottom to give you that eye beam strength. These spars here are not included with the kit and I had them myself on hand. Same thing for the ones on the other side. When I built this kit, um, I only needed a few glues to bring the whole thing together. You could probably get by with less, but I feel using the right glue at the right time really makes a difference. Um, and combining different kinds of adhesives can really maximize your weight saving potential. So for CA glue, I made sure to use uh, foam safe CA and this is the um, gap filling style so it's medium thickness. This gives it a little bit better grip than some of the thinner stuff that I found. I also use the uh, welder adhesive. This stuff is fantastic for gluing the wing sections together. I used a lot of foam tack where I would normally use welder but I go a little bit lighter on the application and the foam tap has, has some good flex to it. The thread lock is used for keeping the motor mount secured um, to the motor blocks and the hot glue um, really does the best when tacking in some of the parts just to keep them in a position where you want to be able to easily remove them later. This would include the electronics and the standoffs that allow the winglets to be screwed into the side of the plane. Since I've actually gotten to fly this plane and crash it a little bit, it's taken on a few repairs and those repairs require a bit of adhesive and typically some laminate sometimes. So we've taken on a little bit of weight from the original fi uh, final dry weight 
and we can measure the new dry weight now. First I'll need to tear this so I've got something that can balance the plane on there otherwise it'll just flip around on me. So we've got a final weight of 386, 386 grams. And as I said, I had to repair some spots, and that's because there are some places that are a little weak, noticeably here near the motor mount, and that's because of the way I cut into this foam, and it's really kind of shallow here. This side hasn't given me as much trouble as this side. Um, other than that, there aren't too many bad spots in terms of weaknesses. The foam, or the, the lack of all the foam here, and just using laminate on the battery bay has, has proved really sturdy. I'm actually quite surprised. The um, I-beam in there hasn't really given me a problem, although it probably should be up higher, and instead I should be running wires underneath it. Other than that, everything is really held up. I haven't had any issues. Um, I did have a crack here, but I was able to fix that by flooding it with a bunch of adhesive and really getting um, some CA glue in there to wick into the carbon fiber. One other weak spot is actually where the foam and the block meet. This is a place where using a little bit of extra adhesive will actually go a long way because if you don't have enough grip here, this, this will just tear off easily in a light crash and then you're sitting there waiting for it to re uh, adhere before you can race again, which is not great in the middle of competition. So for the wiring of the spec wing, it's actually pretty easy. Um, I created a diagram that I'll include here at the end of the video, but just a quick overview. The battery plugs in here to this XT60 terminal. This soldered directly to the ESC shares power to both the VTX and this BEC. The VTX has a built-in voltage regulator to power the camera, and this BEC is adjustable, set to 5.5 volts, powers the receiver, which also powers a servo. This way my video system and my, my control system are a little bit separated in terms of what's running the power and I've got a little bit of extra um, overhead in terms of total amperage capacity on both of these uh, BECs. The overall system though doesn't really have any issues. I used to make the setup require plugging in a balance lead to power on the FPV connection, but it's really easier just to solder everything into one plug. So that way it's all set up and, and ready to go. You don't accidentally forget to plug something in. And really here the trick is now you just power on the video transmitter and make sure that the, the transmitter is actually transmitting before you take off. So I wanted to make sure you get a good look at the layout as a whole. And here's the top side and the same thing for the bottom side. So finally, what do I think I could change or improve? Well, I can go to some lighter gear. Um, lighter and better gear. I know I can shave a gram or two off by going to the newer FreeSky RX. That'll make it a little bit smaller, a little lighter, still have the same signal strength and quality output. I know with the VTX, I can actually get the new Evo VTX, which gives me the ability to change settings over PWM and have a built-in kind of OSD to it, a little bit more full-featured. I actually really like that idea, especially because it's easy enough to power the VTX directly off the battery instead of running the voltage uh, detection for the camera to the battery. Uh, I'm going to work back more on placement of this antenna here. The way it kind of got in there is because I, I traced it out, started cutting, and then by the time I actually started pushing everything into fit, I realized it was not exactly where I wanted it to be, so it's slightly tilted. What I needed to do is cut the hole a little bit closer and give myself more room to bury it deeper by giving myself a little bit more slack on this antenna. One other thing I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm going to take these servos, and because these servos are just so strong, there's more torque in them, then is really required to move this length of control surface, especially at the weight and speed that these things are going are, are built and moving. So I think I can actually move it just to the other side of this section line here. And instead of butting it up against this piece of foam, I can butt it up against this piece of foam right along this edge. And that can bring this over a little bit more. And that will actually help keep the CG a little bit farther forward because I won't have to um, be so far back in order to avoid hitting the sparring. So if I do that, I can actually run it a little bit closer to over here 
and the only downside is this arm gets a little longer. If I get concerned about bending, I can always just take a piece of carbon fiber rod, run it right along next to it, and heat shrink it over, and that carbon fiber rod will just stiffen this up nice and fine. So I won't have any issues with bending there. So that's going to wrap it up for this VAS spec wing V2 build. We've got the whole thing covered now. And if you've got any questions, feel free to comment or send me a message. I'm happy to help you guys get these things built and flying. The more racers we have out there, the more fun this thing is. See you around.